Hello and welcome to the next day of our lessons in Rust. Today we are going to be looking at lifetimes and memory safety. And the first video here is going to be why lifetimes matter. And I've just created a new library here. Now the basic principle here is that when a variable goes out of scope, that variable dies. But of course, we want to be able to sometimes point to another variable. So that's what a pointer is. And in Rust, the syntax for a pointer is and, which is often referred to as a borrow. Well, if that variable dies, but we still have something pointing to it, then when we read it, we could read anything and we don't know what we're going to get. And that's bad for security and for lots of other reasons. Let's continue working with our money type. So I've created this function here, which will take a value and instead of returning an actual GBP, the memory copied, this is just going to return a pointer to that variable. So we'll create a new GBP here. Let g equal GBP and its value will be i. And we will just return a pointer to g. And let's write a test for it. Let g equal money pointer and we'll send three and assert equal. This should be a pointer. G should be a pointer. So we'll need to dereference it to compare it with another. So we'll dereference G and compare that with a GBP whose value is also three. So we run this. We have an error here saying expected lifetime parameter. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> well, basically, the compiler is saying, I want to know how long this parameter, this thing is going to live. But it doesn't know. It can't know. Um, oops, let's. So because it's returning something that's borrowed, we need to know how long that thing is going to live or when it's going to die. Actually, the problem with this function is that G is going to die as soon as this function ends. And so it cannot live long enough for us to actually do anything with it. The only way we can return a pointer to something is if we received a pointer in the first place. But we'll come to that later. It's asking for a lifetime parameter and we can add one here. Now this is the notation. You put after the borrow re representation, you put an apostrophe and then its name, and this should declare a lifetime. But this lifetime doesn't already exist. We'd normally need to declare that as a static parameter. So, Anything in the angle brackets is a compile time parameter. It's not something that is readable during the runtime, but it's checkable at compile time. And so let's declare this A as a static parameter and reference it in our return and see if this compiles. And here is the new statement. The borrowed value does not live long enough. And that's what I was saying is that this borrowed G, well, G is going to die here. So when we return it, this pointer is immediately invalid. In other languages like Go or Java or anything else, you can return a pointer without any trouble because they're all garbage collected. And so the G won't die as soon as it reaches the end of its scope. It will die when all of the pointers that are, when everything that's pointing to it is also dead and then the garbage collector is called in rust because we do not have a garbage collector the program needs to know when to kill anything and so the best time is when that variable goes out of scope but this means your pointers need to know when that thing is going to die and they can't get around it in fact this problem goes even bigger let's let's hide this function for a bit and we'll make another couple of functions. This one will be called on money. And it's going to take an A, which will be an I32, and a B, which will also be an I32, for two kinds of money. And this is going to return an actual GBP. And we'll make it pub because it's a library. So we'll start here with let G equal GBP A. 
And then we will put let r equal a pointer to g, or a borrow of g. Now, once we've got a borrow of g, as long as we're holding a borrow, we cannot change g in any way. And we'll do let res for result equal g dot zero plus b, and that will be a gbp, and we'll return res. We'll tuck away these tests and let g equal on money and we'll send three comma four assert equal g gbp of seven and this test works we have assigned this borrow here to r and we have oh that's supposed to be r let's change that with an r so we're going to use the borrowed reference instead of and now it doesn't even complain that we've got any unused variables, so that's good. But what if we create a new scope? So using two squiggly braces like that, we can create a new scope. And in here, R is pointing to G, so we cannot change G. And we can no longer reference R outside of that scope. So this should come up with two errors. One, that R doesn't exist, so how can we use it here? And the other, G is immutable. So yeah, it cannot find R in that scope. That's the biggest error, and it's not even going to point out the other one. So let us put let R over here, and then we can assign to it without creating. If we keep a let here, it creates a new R variable, but we don't want to do that. We want to reference the variable at the top here. So so r equals a pointer to g and that's complaining that we're changing g which obviously means it must be mutable but here so here's the complaint g is borrowed but dropped while it's still borrowed it's dropped at this at line 22 so if we go to line 22 oddly this is complaining the borrowed value doesn't live long enough because of the order they were created so if we swap these two round so here, because the G is created first, it will be destroyed last. And so that drop won't be a problem. But there is still a problem because we are trying to assign, change the value of something that's been borrowed. And that is bad, right? It's two things. If something is pointing to something and something else is changing it, what happens if the one thing tries to read it? I realize that for now we're in the same thread, but but you really have to have ownership of what you're working on to be able to edit it. And that's a principle in Rust. So here it's saying we are, we are assigning to G, but we've borrowed from it here. So we can't assign to it while we've borrowed it. What about if we define G inside this scope? So R exists outside the scope, but G only exists inside this scope. And here's the important message. The borrowed value does not live long enough. So any time you use a pointer, if the object in question that you're pointing to will die, will reach the end of its scope, before you drop that pointer, so for example, this R pointer lasts right to here, then you're going to have a problem. If we pull away the scope altogether, this will work, mostly. Oh yeah, and put this first. So how can you pass pointers around from one part of your program to another without being worried about the lifetimes coming to an end too soon?